Hey, welcome to the Fabric of Culture podcast, episode three, where I interview fashion models, designers, and other creatives, and, you know, learn a little bit how to get started and the uh, roundabout ways that you should start yourself. All right, introduce yourself, man. Yeah, so my name is Gil. Also go by Guilty Pleasure. Uh, Dallas DJ for the past 10 years. DJ all of the players from Lizard Lounge, Top Golf, Hookah Lounges, etc. So uh, my uh, music that I play is music that makes you feel something that mm. people say, mm, like I felt that before. <laughs> so ranges from house, uh, techno to drum and bass even. Okay. Uh, for you, how do you make someone feel something? Because I know there's like certain DJs I hear and say, like, okay, like I, I either I feel like I have to start moving. Like I have mm-hmm. no choice. Yeah, I think there's two things. One is the lyrics, you know, those lyrics can make you feel something. And then mm-hmm. there's also melodies that can make you feel something. There's instrumentals and it doesn't have to be electronic music either. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Explosions in the Sky. If you've ever heard of them, they did the soundtrack to Friday Night Lights. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah it's uh, that kind of music can make you feel a certain type of way and mm-hmm. take you to a certain place. And for you, how did you get started in all this? Yeah, so I actually grew up uh, in playing in orchestra and in band. So in orchestra, I played bass for seven years. And then in high school, the last two years, I joined band and I actually played sousaphone. So it's the the giant one with a huge bell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, Like tuba, basically. So. I was, uh, it was a lot of fun, honestly, uh, being in marching band. And those were some really great memories that I made. Um, and I think it was really cool because, so I have a twin brother. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, I actually um, know. Yeah. So I was, <laughs> I was in orchestra and he was in band. And I thought it would be pretty cool to join band as well because it interested me. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to be a music major when I grew up. And, uh, I thought, oh, well, you know, me and my brother will be together, like, you know, hang, marching together. So I thought, yeah. I thought that would be pretty cool, too. Um, but uh, also growing up, I was in a rock band as well. Uh, I love classic rock. And uh, we did, we played at the talent show. Uh, we played two covers to Paramore. Crush, crush, oh, nice. crush, 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 and misery business. <laughs> okay, that's, okay. That's, yeah. the big, that, that's the question I get all the time. It's like, what did you play? Did you you better play misery business. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's a must. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you feel like it's easier with that music background of actually playing instruments to not only DJ, but so I know you produce on the side too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, do you think it makes it like you basically have a better understanding of how to make the songs, how to mix the songs to get the crowd going? Yeah, no, definitely. I think. Uh, There's some music theory for producing that's been very helpful, and even for mixing as well. Mm. Uh, One of the the tricks that uh, I think you uncover when you learn how to DJ a circle of fifths, you know, like one says, okay, whatever. The the next track that you play can be, you know, the next fifth. Uh, So, for example, if it's, uh, and I hope I get this right, if you're in like C major, uh, you can go, I, I thought it was G major or something like that, yeah. So C, D, E, F, G, circle of fifths. Mm, You count to five, right? And so uh, you can do that. Um, But that's not, that's just a guideline. That's not like strict rules. People, you can hear everyone's opinions on it. That's just one way to do it. Uh, It doesn't mean it's uh, always going to be right. And it doesn't mean that there's other better ways to do it. So, And so, you know, there's. Whenever I hear like someone doing a mix and it's just two songs I wouldn't expect to go together, mm-hmm. does uh does a BPM tie into that or is it like a completely different thing? Like those two, do they actually Yeah, they do. Um or they can. They can, okay. Uh there's a lot of different ways that you can mix. Uh one of them is through beat matching. Mm-hmm. Uh you'll hear uh one track playing, you know, the instrumental and then the next one. The next track they're trying to mix in, they can mix in another instrumental, or they can mix in a vocal chop, uh, or the vocals of the next track, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's different ways to do it. Yeah, because lately I know I've heard there's, there's so many songs on, like, Instagram, TikTok, where it's like, mentally, I wouldn't 
picture those two songs going together and then I hear it and it's like half nostalgia, half it actually sounding like audibly pleasing or it's like, oh, okay. One, I love both of these songs. And then two, I hear them together. And I just, <laughs> right. Like an eargasm. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I think, uh, and that's a special art too, uh, to be able to take someone back through those nostalgic sounds. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone will go crazy for Better Off Alone by, uh, was it Alice DJ? Uh, and that, I mean, that, that track is just one of, one of the classics, right? Uh, if you play uh, Blue, you know, I'm Blue. And I'm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. Like, <laughs> like, everyone goes crazy for that because everyone remembers and everyone mm -hmm. uh, remembers the first time that they heard it. It was probably like at a uh, middle school dance or something like that. And they went wild for it. And now it just takes it back to that. Or it that takes them to that place. So is it a, I guess, is it an art of one, like playing what you want to hear and adding that to what you know the crowd wants to hear? Or is it just completely focusing on the crowd? That's a good question. I think when I first started DJing, I was playing more of what the crowd was uh, wanting to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do like top, depends on the format and the crowd, right? You always, as a DJ, like you, the number one rule is you should always be looking up. You should always be reacting to what the crowd likes, what they don't, what they don't like, right? Okay. I, I think that's that's like your top priority as a DJ. But over time, I've uh, filtered or grown uh, my music taste in such a way that you know I want to play certain types of music more than others. Okay. So when I first started out, I was playing a lot of top forty, I was playing a lot of hip hop, a lot of trap, mm. even Moonbaton, and. Uh, I eventually, maybe I just got burned out on it, but I think that I eventually went into house music as like, okay, like this is where I'm settling. This is where I want to be. Yeah. Uh, and I can I can last here for for quite a while. And you know that's where I got into techno. Um, people will say all roads lead to leads to techno. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like it can be. It still it still sounds great, but like there's certain things about trap where it can be overwhelming, and it can mm -hmm. be repetitive. So I feel like there was a point where that's all I listened to for probably like a year there. Right. But before that, I was like I started out with uh, what was it? I started out with like Above and Beyond and like Cascade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I love that. So I used to go to where was I? I didn't have like a CD burner, so I go to Borders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I like that. burn like mixes. <laughs> What was Borders? I, I never. It's basically never like a. It. It's like half price books, but you could like actually burn a CD. Oh really? So I like burn my mixes of like electronic music there. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it'd just be like above and beyond cascade, and then like some weird like rap mixes I'd find mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, like they did a remix of this song, but it sounded mm -hmm. pretty good. What what songs did you like by Cascade? Curious. Oh my gosh, it's been a while, honestly. Uh, so one of mine that I will listen to to this day, uh, it's a I think it's Move for Me. Mm, I, that's I, a good one. Yeah, yeah, Move for Me is a good one. Uh, 4 a.m. is another one. There's a bunch of songs that he when he first uh, was coming out. I think it was uh, Fire and Ice was the album, and then Fire and Ice that whole album yeah. I can listen to like through. Yeah, straight straight flames, and it's like, yeah. it's great because it's two different moods. It's like you have that fire side where it has more energy than the ice side. It's well, it was the same song, right? But it's like cooled down. It was smooth, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And then there was a Star White Seduction too. Mm -hmm. That was a that was like an awesome album by him. You said above and beyond. Yeah. Well, what tracks did you like from them? From them, uh, honestly, my memory is trash, but I know. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a, I can fly. I listen. I liked Ocean Labs and I liked Above and Beyond. So I liked both. Yeah. You know, because like Above and Beyond, this, I mean, Ocean Lab was the same thing, right? But just this, uh, yeah. the singer, but a different style. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. No, I loved Ocean Lab yeah. too. I still listen to that. Like, so from Ocean Lab would be if I could fly. Mm -hmm. uh, above and Beyond, probably uh, Sun and the Moon, and then uh, what was it? Mm. There was a. I have the acoustic album stuck in my head right now, but mm -hmm. I know there was a. I'm not gonna remember. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> but I know what was it? 
I saw them in New York for what was it, ABGT 100? Mm -hmm. Oh, no way. Yeah, that was, was <laughs> it was amazing. That's when I fell in love with uh, Matt Zoe. Yeah, no, he's good. Yeah, because I, I, I had heard like one song by him, but then I saw that show and I wasn't expecting his energy. And it was one of those where I didn't know I wanted to hear these songs. Right. And then I heard them all and I like went back later and started <laughs> playing them all. I was like, oh, I didn't. I've never heard any of these songs before, but I felt like I had to dance to each one. Mm -hmm. So how do you read the crowd? Like, how do you adjust to them? <laughs> well, if you play a track and the crowd clears, you know not to, <laughs> not yeah. to play that song mm -hmm. again. <laughs> that's like probably the first, <laughs> that's probably the first one. And I'll, I'd be lying if I said I've never done that before. I have definitely done that. Um, and I've, I've learned from that. Uh, sometimes you do kind of have to stereotype a little bit. Like you think, like, okay, what song, what track is going to get them moving? You know, um, you know, maybe I'll play some hip hop here, or maybe like a remix, uh, and then go into something that I like. Um, so it's a balance, I think. Mm. Uh, if you, this is just my opinion. Um, you know, I. I burned out from playing what everyone else wanted to. Uh, and then I started reeling it back in because I wanted to play stuff that I, I wanted to. I had to change where I was playing to do that. Mm, okay. Um, to find more people that, you know, liked what I was playing. But, you know, at the end of the day, too, like, you know, it was just the balance between, you know, what the crowd wants and what I want. Um, so if you're starting out, would you say – get the get the skill level to do that so go somewhere where you like have to play this and then gain that skill and then like once you have the skills you can say hey like find places that basically cater to what you want to play like the genres you want to play or what do you yeah you know i think there's there's a couple of ways to go about it like if you wanted to get into djing and if you wanted to learn you can always go and take a class mm -hmm. I mean, you can do like online youtube tutorials so that's actually how i got started um but one of the first festivals i ever went to that actually inspired me to, to start djing was actually edc dallas oh uh, I was, wow i, was <laughs> I able, wanted to go to that so bad <laughs> yeah I, I was i was in the, i was in there uh really early on so it's, it's really cool to to have that experience because a lot of people you know say like oh i wish i was there i wish i was there mm -hmm. Um, but that's that was really what inspired me seeing all the music the community uh, was really awesome too and I think for me I'm a very data person I'm a very analytical person so I wanted to reverse engineer it you know mm -hmm. there weren't a lot of YouTube I don't know if that there was a lot of YouTube tutorials back then or a lot of like master classes back then. I don't think that existed. It's just YouTube tutorials where it was like, you know, hey, you know, there's this guy. I still remember his name. His name was Ella Skins, I think. And is uh, I think this dude from like the UK or something like that, like teaching you like what to do, what not to do on like how to scratch, on how to mix, what to look out for. Um, and so what I did, my step process was like, okay, like I'm going to listen to a mix. I'm going to reverse engineer it by taking those two same tracks and trying to figure out how they're mixing those two songs. And then eventually what I learned is that music and especially dance music, it's all formatted the same way. Like you have phrases. So you have like an intro phrase, you have like a breakdown phrase, uh, phase, and then you have like a buildup phase and then there's a drop mm. phase and they're all like blocked. Right. And so once you learn where those like Lego blocks go and how to mix out of those blocks, you can then, switch to another block from a different song. Right. Follow that same formula. Right. And, oh, okay. And so uh, the way you streamline it is you can create cue points in your music that uh, note down where those points are in the track. Right. That's why they're called cue points. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you remember me like DJing at some of those hookah lounges, if you ever like, if you remember going out there, uh that's how i was able to mix relatively well while being like absolutely plastered is <laughs> because i had those uh key points there and mm -hmm. so like anyone if if i told anyone how to read them anyone could use my music and play okay so it's honestly i never well i noticed that but i mainly noticed it with the uh, lyrics like sometimes i noticed it with the song itself but uh for you when you're doing those cue points how, do, how would someone who doesn't really understand that, like, 
hone in on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're just uh, what I would say is just pull it abstract. Like it's just uh, a formatted way to say this is the next section of the track. Mm, okay. Right. So there's in music, you know, you have an intro, you have like a lyrical breakdown, right? You have like a chorus, right? Or a verse. You can think of it that way. Um, uh, and in dance music, it's it's very, very similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know I've... <laughs> Lately, I've seen like a few like videos where it's certain songs, like the 2010s. It was probably like a... It'd be either like house or like drum and bass where you just have like same songs fall in that same form and they just play one mm-hmm. and then you wouldn't realize it was the next song already and you hear three or four or five like, oh yeah i didn't realize how similar these were <laughs> yeah right 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 and like and like i said before there's many ways to mix that's just one of them mm-hmm. um there's a lot of people are way more creative um for example if you ever heard of james hype like i I've seen him blowing up and it's really cool to see because he is actually juggling uh, different types of songs together. For example, you know, he'll have the instrumental of one song going on. Meanwhile, on another deck that he has, he has the vocal track, you know, that he's going to loop in order to climax to the drop of the next song. Right. Mm, Uh, And then he's like chopping up that vocal every which way, or he's rolling it in such a way that, you know, it starts to get faster, 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 faster in order to build a climax. So really what he's doing is he's kind of creating his own remix or bootleg or mashup, whatever you want to call it Mm -hmm. uh, on the fly. And I think that is uh, what he, he calls, I think he calls it real DJing. Mm. Bring back real DJing and yeah, yeah. and honestly, like it's it's a lot of fun to do stuff like that. Like yeah. I've definitely picked up some tips, like from seeing how he's doing it, because he'll always show like how he's doing it on the decks, and then like I look at that, take it back to you know when I'm playing, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try that next time, or I'm gonna try to practice this, and so oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So for you, like, who inspires you, or who you're like, okay, these are my artists or DJs or just genres in general where you're like this is heavy in my repertoire. yeah that's a good question it's changed over time mm-hmm. uh, when I first started uh, DJing it was a lot of cascade for sure um, then when I was in kind of the multi-genre uh, era uh, I would say where you know I would do like the trap music with the hip-hop with like you know the big room big room was huge back then too um it would be gta gta uh had a mix that they would always come out and it was uh called you know like f genres fuck genres yeah yeah Mm -hmm. i don't know if you ever listened to that but like that really inspired me to get outside of the comfort zone of just playing one genre like and just absolutely mixing it up another example of uh a dj that did that back in the day was uh, DJ AM, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, he would mix like rock, hip hop, like, and it would be just crazy, like uh, mixes that you'd never think would go together. Yeah, I like when it mixes like that. It's like, it's almost like they're picking the best from each genre or their favorite from each genre and blending them together. Mm -hmm. And then it shows me like new songs I wasn't expecting. That's what I liked about GTA because I had never, well, I had heard of them like a few months before I went to EDC, like like, Mm -hmm. 10 years back. And I listened to like one of their one or two of their sets, and mm-hmm. then I see them. It was like closing down at the end of the night. I remember I was so tired. It was like two or three a.m. Mm-hmm. I, like, oh, I can't, I yeah. can't go anymore. And then they come on like near the end. I was like, I have to get up again. Yeah, <laughs> they like, brought the energy back for me because of how well they mixed everything together. Right. So even though I was so dead tired that I was sitting like two minutes ago, mm-hmm. now I'm just moving again. <laughs> yeah. No. And and they they also had a cascade track too. I, f- I forget what it was, but it I just remember it going so hard. Uh, but it, yeah, maybe it was move for me. I think they mm, actually had okay. a remix. I'm gonna go look for that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it goes really hard, but. Uh, yeah, GTA was one, and then later on, it was, I don't know if you ever heard of 4B. 4B was really good, because mm, no, he did, he did Jersey Club, and I, I, I love Jersey Club. Like, that's, that's one of my guilty pleasures mm-hmm. right there. I, I hear a Jersey track, and I'm like, that's, that's, that gets me dancing. Um, but yeah, he did, he was doing, like, Jersey Club, 
uh, trap. Um, and then it's like a mix of trap and Jersey club, which is, it's not hard style because it doesn't, doesn't go that hard. I think it was called hybrid bubbly or something like that. At the oh, time. okay. And yeah, so he, he did tracks like those, but then also would bring it back down to like the house. Uh, he would throw like dubstep in there and, you know, he still does it. Um, and I think, you know, his, his sets are always high energy too. And, um, Definitely, I miss playing some of those. Uh, some of those sets. Maybe I'll I'll have to do that next time. When was the last time you like played a set like that? You know, it was probably when I was back in the the hookah lounge days, oh, okay. like yeah, twenty like sense. fifteen, mm-hmm. twenty sixteen, when I could really experiment on all different types of sounds, because uh, you had to really attract everyone. You know, mm-hmm. you're not gonna you're not gonna make everyone happy. Not everyone's gonna get the amount of genre of music that they like when yeah usually club. everyone wants something so right and so that that had that made me be like a little bit more versatile in in order to accommodate mm. everyone it seemed like everyone but then that also made for like really cool uh mixing and like i said experimentation of the sounds like you're mixing rock with hip-hop with moomba with you know latin uh you know, the, there's endless possibilities there and it's, it's a very cool thing to to, to blend those uh, different things in order to create something really magical. How do you blend that well, or how do you like accommodate to those crowds? I know there's places I've been to where I'm I'm enjoying it, but I can definitely tell the crowds like like what the fuck is this? Yeah, like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, I think uh, it's a lot of trial and error. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I don't. You know, when when I was doing the the hookah lounge stuff, it was five hour sets and maybe it would be at least once a weekend, but sometimes twice a weekend. So when you're doing that for doing that, uh, occurring of a mix every weekend, you get really creative. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it practice makes perfect too. It's the amount of time that you're putting into something naturally, you're just going to get better at it. Uh, and that's actually one of the things that I learned Kind of taking it back to uh my early orchestra days is like that's one of the biggest takeaways i've learned not just in music but in life mm-hmm. is that you get uh you get out of it what you put into it yeah for and sure. and the more you practice the more that you'll get better at something right if you keep uh you know killing plants because you're overwatering them <laughs> you know like you're you know obviously like you know if you practice like what plants need you know eventually they grow and that's how you can be a florist if that's what you want to do but the same applies to to music as it applies to everything in life as a plant killer i found oh there's this like a there's this plant brand where you just pour in like water for <laughs> once a month and then it'll do it for you mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's my <laughs> my tickle but uh i know when i've been to shows like that how did you what is the word for it How did you switch to your new genre? Like, how did you like develop mm-hmm. that new skill set? Because I know if you're starting out, like someone who doesn't know how to <laughs> how to like start out like that, because you have the skill set built up from orchestra. Mm-hmm. If say someone doesn't have the music background, how would they have that understanding? How would they go about it? Yeah, yeah. If they have no, say they have no music background, should they, like you said, take the DJ class? Mm-hmm. or yeah. a little bit of both you know there yeah there's two things one is you know take a class uh there's there's plenty of of uh material out there for you to study mm-hmm. but then also just go experience it yourself uh i think it's it's one thing to to try to learn how to do something by like like you know looking through a screen but it's another one to actually uh, actually it. like yeah do it and then uh, some of the advice that I've gotten from from others is that uh, if you just like go up like in a, in a club and just ask like, hey, you know, like this is really cool what you're doing and, and asking like a DJ like questions, obviously, like when they're not mixing or something yeah. like that. But like, you know, like <laughs> afterwards, you know, sticking around like nine times out of ten, they're they're more than happy to help uh, is what I found in my in my experience. And typically um, they like some DJs do like that, like, you mm-hmm. know, coming up, uh, getting interested in what their craft is, what they're doing. 
And I think that makes them, you know, feel good about like, hey, like, you know, I'm inspiring somebody to do something. That's a good feeling. So Yeah, I'd say most of the DJs I've met have a very, like, they're very warm about it. So they're very welcoming. They'll show you like a thing or two. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> as someone who doesn't have an understanding, like even like hitting up friends, like they'll show me a thing or two just at the end of their set or say it's like a slow night. Right. But where would you look for like sets? Uh, YouTube is probably the best place to, to go look. Oh, sorry. Not sets, but like say like venues. Oh, venues. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, I think there's, it, it depends on what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, in the electronic music scene, like in Dallas, it's always shifting. It was uh, pretty heavy uh, in Deep Ellum. I think it still is. Uh, it just depends on the venues that you're going to. I mean, there's like green light social is pretty hot right now. Yeah. Um, you know, it used to be, uh you know lizard lounge before they the closed down like that was a really huge hot spot right r.i.p uh, r.i.p yeah. <laughs> you know I, I miss that place too now um now that it's gone it's like oh man like i just one more show to go back there you know that, that that'd be really cool to see um it'll do is also a really cool place um shout out there um and then there's all there's other venues that are that are playing house music um but you just got to go in and, and look. I mean, I think that's half the fun is like trying mm -hmm. to find that treasure, trying find to find the new places, trying to find those new places. That's right. Yeah. Are you able to show like any secret tricks or things that someone like would surprise someone who didn't understand DJing? Secret tricks uh, like to mixing, to scratching, to or just anything in general. Anything that speaks to you. Yeah, we'll just keep it open. Yeah, you know, I think one of the, one of my favorite tricks to do is, and I wish I had the the, the DJ set up. I could show you guys um, rather than tell you. But uh, if you're uh, about to go through a build up on one of the tracks, mm -hmm. uh, and you have a, a vocal sample on the other one, uh, what you can do is start to loop that one, right? And then so now you start to create tension, uh, uh, right? And so. Uh, there's a, a setting that you can do on some of the CD players uh, to loop out. And what you're doing is you're going to close in that loop. So it starts to get that loop starts to get faster and faster and faster. Um, and then that creates this like build up and rise of intention in the track that I think is one of the, the, the coolest tricks to, to, to play. Uh, when you're doing it live, and I think I've got like the most reaction from it. Like, oh man, that's that looks so complicated, but it's like <laughs> the easiest thing to do. Uh, and then you just like add like a filter or like a little effect on it, and it is so it's like a simple and fun way to build up that anticipation, right? For right, exactly. Um, you can also like try like scratching and on top of some uh, a track, and then like bring it in that way. Like that's also really cool too. Uh, when I first started DJing, I, I wasn't always on CD players. I was actually on Technique turntables. And so I learned a bit of turntablism before uh, moving like just strictly into, you know, like CD players. Oh, or, nice. like, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, like, like the, or like the CDJ 2000s or, and whatnot. So like having that skill set to, to scratch and actually feel a record like moving, like it was really advantageous because like, that helped me understand like how to scratch and how to bring in a track and then like how to uh, on on the turntables what you would have to do there's there's two ways to, like speed up and slow down a track you can uh push the magnetic disc like around like with those little dots on the side or you can like actually like twist the top of it mm, in order okay. to make it go faster right because if you try to try to just dig into the record it's going to be very noticeable. Yeah. Like, you know, you'll skirt and <laughs> everyone looks up like, what was yeah, that? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So there's, you, you found using uh, turntablism, like I, I would find ways to be able to just like, you know, like uh, scratch into a track and then just drop it right there. And uh, I still do that to this day. I miss uh, using turntables mm. all the time. So it's like uh, one of those things that I want to get back into for sure. Is it just, uh, that your skill set's so heavy in the other direction, or is it that uh, it's more difficult to jump on that if you're already established? Like, it, it's something you should experiment on your own time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I would highly recommend anyone that wants to get into DJing try try turntablism too. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I do I like 
transitioned into the CD players was because of how easy it is to put all of your tracks into a USB and just be able to plug and play oh, that and makes sense. Yeah. go, just go to any club and like, you know, you don't have to bring all of your equipment and all of the scratch vinyls and all of the needles. Uh, you just have to bring one little thing, which is like a USB, which I actually have in here. Uh, I keep, you know, I keep yeah. that thing on me mm -hmm. just in I case, have it ready. <laughs> just in case, just in case, uh, someone pops up and it's like, Oh, do you, do you have music? And it's like, yeah, let's do it. Like, let's Was there a time where like you, how that actually happened to you and you didn't have it or is it just like you know you know it's funny it it does happen and it always happens where i don't have my usb on me so mm. i've started to like bring it out sometimes <laughs> uh yeah last night uh that's that did have i was asked to do that and then uh, but they couldn't put my usb in there they didn't have enough like plugs or something okay like so that. you had it ready they just weren't ready yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> switched it up that time yeah so but like like i was mentioning before i mean uh, I think turntablism. I don't. I wouldn't say it's like a dying art or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think so. But um, trying to you know buy yourself like some technique turntables and like learning how to scratch is uh, something that I think every DJ should at least try once and feel and learn to to feel what that feels like. You know, because okay. it's it's a completely different feel and it feels so much more natural. What's the difference? So in, in a CD player, the the platters aren't moving; they're they're stationary mm -hmm. they're, um, until you move them, right? But on a turntable with actual like twelve inch vinyls, those things are actually spinning while it's playing, and so you can feel the music and you can scratch a lot easier. Okay. Also, because the diameter of those things are larger, right? Like with like they're twelve inches across for those um, vinyls, and you. Uh, a little change uh so like the, the when you turn it there's it's it's more controllable that's that's how i would describe mm. how, how that feels like and so because you're able to control it a little bit better than you would a cd player like it, it's helped me like learn a lot of different techniques and scratching so it almost makes you more versatile because it's like you notice i guess it's, it's a it's not a subtle difference it's a huge difference where you can actually feel or you can hear it too right right mm. yeah and um I think the, another reason why people or DJs now are learning more about CDJs versus the, the technique side of things or the record side of things, it's just because it's more of the standard nowadays that yeah. people just clubs have CD players back in, back in the day, you know, obviously like you, you had to like bring records, you had to bring like crates and that was really hard uh, on people. Uh, when you can just bring a USB like this size, right? And then just, you know, plug and play. Yeah, um, I was even surprised to hear you say that it, was, it wasn't a dying thing. I just assumed it was. I didn't know. That. Yeah. So there's still some clubs out there, I think, that are... Uh, and, it, and I think it's a little bit more niche. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one one DJ that still does it, I think, is DJ Snake. I, I always see oh. videos of him using turntables, yeah, you know, uh, at festivals and stuff. Uh, maybe he still does it, maybe he doesn't, but... Uh, I always thought that was really cool about uh, how he would play, uh, and also kind of inspiring too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think just I think the norm is that you know you just everyone can just bring a USB and some headphones, and it's a lot easier to just uh, to plug and play, and and that's why it's gone that direction. But I would love to see a comeback in in records and and scratching uh, and vinyl actually. Yeah. Yeah, and vinyl has been coming back, but interestingly enough. Uh... DJ Snake is one of the people I think of when you were talking earlier mm -hmm. about someone who like meshes genres well together. Yeah. Because I remember uh I hadn't really heard of him before. I was listening to him before at EDC because I was gonna go see him. And I remember that set was a really stellar blend because it was it started out with like it was like heavy rap and then like some French inspired stuff, and then it slowly went over to like some heavy electronic music. And then there was this moment where I just felt like a bunch of R&B songs that I knew, just back to back to back. Mm -hmm. And then five other genres where it's like, oh, I like this. I like that blend, you know, right. of all those. Like, Definitely. Adding a genre clashing, mm -hmm. having genres clash and making them blend well together somehow. Right. It's like, oh, I wouldn't think this would work. Yeah, I think he he had a tour 
I think he had like Chami, he had Mala, uh, and I want to say it was the Pardon My French tour. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that was a good tour. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I was able to go out to that with, with a bunch of friends, and man, like that show like really killed it. I mean, he started out with, uh, well, it was like a Zomboy track that's like really popular, uh, but it was like a remix, and it just like, it just, I remember it going so hard at, at first, and then he would go into dubstep, and then he'd go into like that hybrid bubbly, like, uh, hard style, uh, and then yeah, yeah, those hard style songs made me jump. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So very high energy, very high energy. I feel like I feel a similar way with hard styles I do about trap, where it's I love it to death, but I get tired of it. So when it's it's almost like seasoning, it's like you add too much, and it's like overpowering the actual mm -hmm. like the meal. Mm -hmm. But when I hear like one or two hard style songs, like. I can just go crazy and I feel free. But if it's back to back to back, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm tired now. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and to be honest, you know, I think there are people out there that can like do like, you know, every song is a hard style song. I mm -hmm. think, I think that's the beauty of it though. Like everyone's different. Everyone yeah. likes a certain amount of seasoning. Right. Mm -hmm. um, some people like it very well seasoned. Some people don't like any seasoning. And some and... people, yeah. <laughs> like some people can't handle the spice. So right. like, okay. This is like <laughs> nuclear level spicy, but let me, they're just yeah. eating it like it's normal. Right, right. <laughs> they think mayonnaise is spicy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, to each their own. But, uh, yeah, no, I think um, that's, the, that's the beauty of music is, like, we can – you can wrap uh, a mix with, you know, as much spice or, or not as you want. What are some common mistakes you see newer DJs make and, like, experienced DJs where it's – Mm. or separate them too <laughs> yeah that's a good question um you know one of the things uh that i think is very so like i like i mentioned before i think as a dj one of your your top priority is giving people an experience that they'll never forget mm -hmm. uh, and i think that can be accomplished a number of different ways um don't be you don't have to be focused on like your ability to mix it's more really the song selection to be honest um and you can you can work on all the technique you want but if the songs are ass then no <laughs> one's gonna dance yeah true. no one no one cares about how smooth the transition is if you're going from like the hokey pokey to you know you know oh mcdonald or something <laughs> not those tracks do go hard though um not, not to make fun, but yeah, uh, I would say, you know, song selection is very important. And uh, I think that there's a, I don't know if it's the niche or it's just like the older generation uh, that are just like, you know, technique, technique, technique. And it's like, well, you know, I, I've, I've seen DJs with bad transitions, but good song selection, yeah. like go hard. So it's more like it matters to a point. Like you should have the knowledge to have good transitions, but. The song selection probably lean a little heavier that way right if i were to give it like a a, a number or a balance i would say like and this is just my opinion but mm -hmm. it would be like 65 percent uh you know song selection to 35 percent like transition um and that's that there's a you know standard deviation or like a range right yeah, to that mm -hmm. like you know plus or minus you know like 10 percent or whatever it just depends so like uh, someone can prove that wrong but on Mm -hmm. usually that's probably your opinion like how it would be right yeah that and speaking to everyone in general like mm -hmm. me personally like if i and this is a blessing and the curse of being a dj but if i hear a bad transition it's like nails on chalkboard mm, okay. it really it really does hurt and i notice it and i'm like what was that you know yeah. like like come on man like <laughs> <laughs> and, but not everyone is in tune to to that and so like i can't like speak on behalf of everyone oh, like, that, that yeah, bothers yeah. everyone like it bothers me but that's because like i've i know what they're trying to do mm -hmm. uh and and how it's being executed but for me like with uh less sensitive ear it may it depends on how bad it would be for me to notice <laughs> right right okay for you what where do you think the scene is headed like locally and like music wise like globally yeah that's funny i i mean i'm i go out but i, uh, I don't go out as as much as uh, as much as i used to so mm -hmm. uh, you know take my opinion with a grain of salt uh this is just my you know low um 
observation uh opinion uh but i i think it it depends on where you are right yeah. the where uh in, where in dallas uh there's a lot of great places that are doing very like you know pushing like the niche genres techno like you got like technorotica that's really like pushing that and they do like a, a really great job i would encourage anyone to to go out to one of their shows shout out chris treasure <laughs> and uh <laughs> And the, what they're doing is really awesome, uh, and and helping to push uh, push that like technoculture here in Dallas. Um, uh, but yeah, where is it going in general? Um, I don't know. I I don't want to get a bunch of people with pitchforks and and, and torches like yeah. coming over <laughs> me. Maybe like music is just getting. Um, I, I think people don't like change. Mm, I'm, I'm gonna start okay. with that people don't like change true yeah yeah. Uh, and people like what they're used to and so if you change it up on them you get like old heads that are like oh this isn't what it used to be you know this deep tech like that's what it was in the 90s or in the 2000s like that that's where it was at um i think you just get music that attracts a, a large number of people and then people get annoyed of it yeah uh, like, what was it in the 2010s it was like pro progressive house and big room that mm -hmm. were huge right and then you have in the in the twenties, I guess we're gonna call them. Uh, what was it? It was like bass house that was like really pop. That's really popular, right? And then mm -hmm. now it's tech house. Um, mm. Again, these are just my like low observations. Welcome to argue like from whatever <laughs> point, but uh, I think uh, yeah, like we just it, it's just what a lot of people like. People don't like like the old heads don't like that. Yeah. Um, you know, I miss the, the nineties, uh, late two thousands, uh, trance music. That was, uh, was it, that, there's like that one song, like push by motorcycle or whatever. Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it was, it, it was in that, uh, that era, like, mm -hmm. you know, that I really liked, but yeah, I think, I think that's where it's kind of going. People like tech house a lot now. I think where it's going to go is techno. I, I, I would. I, I'd put money on like everyone wanting to go into like tech the techno route. Mm, okay. Yes, I think I was definitely feeling that style of trance like when I was younger. And it seems like it, it developed into a new style. So for me, like it definitely changed my taste. So I was like, I'll I'll dabble in it. Like I'll dip my toe in, but I wouldn't consistently listen to it. So I feel like that holds true with what you said about the popular thing like people get tired of it they want something new because mm -hmm. i've noticed like more mainstream that people were really feeling rap and they they were really into it they heard like how much you could do with it but then people stopped experimenting and like kind of like stuck to the like you said earlier with the the stick and play where it's like you have this formula right so everyone was following that formula because that's how you get famous that's how you get the money right and then everyone's like okay like can you do something new can right you, like experiment and so mm -hmm. then you got like experimental rap. Mm -hmm. Then everyone was like, eh, like I don't really right. care anymore. Mm -hmm. And then I hear things like uh, Afrobeats, where it's yeah, like, yeah, Afrobeats so, blew up. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. so it's blowing up. So I think right now that'll be the thing, and then people will get tired of that too. Mm -hmm. Where it's like that'll phase out once people are okay. Like, can you switch it up? <laughs> right, right. I think. I mean, you can tell me differently. Mm -hmm. uh, I think music is a lot like. Uh, or is similar in a lot to fashion. I think there's like phases to it. Yeah, like right. It recycles. Mm -hmm. It recycles every like twenty years. I don't know what the, what it is in fashion. Maybe you can tell me differently. I think it's like probably like 20, 30 years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, like it recycles, and you mm -hmm. see like people with like baggy jeans and like tight shirts or whatever, and like oh that's new. And uh, I'm still waiting on when puka shells are going to be a, a thing again. <laughs> uh, I, I want to wear puka shells and not be judged for it. <laughs> but I don't. Honestly. Think that's what I did too. There was a time where like I thought they were the coolest thing ever when I was like looking at like skateboarders and surfers. I was like, okay, yeah, that looks like, sweet. <laughs> yeah, I just I just wanted a lifestyle where I I just didn't care and yeah. like, I felt like puka shells was like the perfect way to display that. Um, this exemplifies yeah. freedom. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, yeah, and yeah, I I think that the the genres they recycle over and over again. And mm -hmm. one thing that we're seeing now. Uh, from my observation is that you get a lot of those the 90s and 2000s tracks uh like resurfacing again yeah um, before that it was 80s like i heard a lot of 80s like 
like the weekend did like a lot of age inspired things that other people are like oh like mm-hmm. we're doing the 80s now we're right. making money off the 80s and so you'll hear other like pop singers other like genres like, even i've heard some rap where they like threw in some 80s stuff mm-hmm. like david Guetta came out with that one track blue oh recently, yeah mm-hmm. but like that's as an example that i mean that track is what like from a while ago, right? Yeah, but he came out with like two or three others like that too, where it was like mm-hmm. that's similar. He's like, hey, let me remake like a 90s song. Right. No, <laughs> it, exactly. So that's what I think we're saying. It's just a mm-hmm. recycling of those songs. Okay. This is a fun one for me. Uh <laughs> if you could eternally be stuck in like stuck in one genre to listen to, and then we'll go like to DJ. Mm-hmm. It can't be the same if you want, but so uh, run that back. What, what was Basically, you'll be stuck in, you'll be eternally stuck with one genre. So we'll do it separately. Eternally stuck for one genre to listen to, and then eternally stuck with one genre to DJ, like to crowds to. That's a really hard question because <laughs> I, hmm. yeah, like I'm, I'm weighing the genres. There's so many that I bounce back, back and forth between. Yeah. Like my mood, like sometimes it's like a alternative rock, sometimes it's a rap, sometimes it's like electric, like house. Yeah, because the so to to answer, so I'll answer your question first, and then I'll answer it the way I wanted to answer it. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> so first, I, I think I would just pick Deep House. Uh, mm, okay. Yeah, Deep House, uh, the stuff that like Gorgon City plays, like that I could listen Ooh, to that. Oh yeah, I can listen to that all day and all night, and uh they the way that they're mixing the music too is is spot on like if you've ever seen them live i uh, still haven't <laughs> so I, they, they played back at stereo live like yeah. earlier this year and i was able fortunate enough to go see them and and it was just a, such an amazing show um so yeah i would say deep house uh to listen and play to but normally like my schedule or like just my life in general is like i'm listening to rock uh like during the day hours and then at night you know like going to clubs and stuff like that i'll i'll do the electronic music so i actually compartmentalize them a lot oh interesting and so okay. I, yeah i mean as one of the things i i mentioned before is like i got burned out uh, yeah. before and so i try to about ba- create a balance uh and listen to as much different music as i can for hmm i'll just pick two since <laughs> <laughs> i'll do two separate ones since i can't dj uh Top right now, I'd say would actually probably be, I think, like alternative rock. And then lately, I keep on going back to it. So I think I could listen to it eternally. So I keep on missing it. It's new disco. New disco? Yes. Yeah, 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 like yeah. I'd, I'd go back to that. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot how much I love yeah. this. Yeah. So I think I could listen to that because it just makes me happy. And yeah. it makes me want to dance. So. I have not listened to new disco I, in I love it so, so long. Much. I used to have... <laughs> A crate. Oh, mm-hmm. it's just like just like a folder of songs of just new disco, mm-hmm. and that that's the first time I think in a decade that I've thought about it. And so now, <laughs> thank you for reminding me. I'll have to go back and check out those songs. Yeah. For you, what's something that uh, bugs you about the DJ scene? Um, and then we'll go positive next. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. Um, I think everyone's, maybe everyone's opinion is different on this, but the one thing that I don't like is it seems like a lot of people, and, and not to overgeneralize, there's a lot of good people in the scene. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of people that are willing to help you. But my experience too has been, there's a lot of people that are kind of just in it for themselves. Yeah. Um, and that's what I encountered like very early on. There's people that are going to try to screw you over. Um, and you have to learn to, you know, invite, you know, the energies that you want around you and you have to kind of reciprocate that. Uh, so if, you know, if you want a positive people around you, you know, you have to be a positive person. Uh, and so, you know, over time, I think like the group that I'm around is, uh, is pretty positive. So, yeah, I, I like to keep those energies around me. Yeah, it seems to be like a give and take. It's like uh, people who are bigger can decide most of the culture, but then you still have to have the people who are, like, coming up buying into that. Right. But I think it, it helps a lot if the people who are more well-known or who are more established in the scene, actually, in whatever scene, 
actually have that positive, like, we'll help each other. Everyone mm-hmm. can eat. It's not. Right. Well, not everyone can eat, but, like, as long as you're helping them, like, there's a way to do it. There's, like, there's some balance between the two. Right. And I think that this goes into if someone wanted to, like, learn how to DJ and they wanted to get booked, mm-hmm. like, at a place, one of the – I've gotten this question a lot, and I've – and I suggest every time, it's, like, go out and support – bring out friends to an artist's uh, event show that you can like bring people because that shows value to a promoter. That shows value to a club that, you know, you can bring out people, but also like, it just means that you're being involved and you're supporting somebody else too. Mm. Uh, And I think you can't just ask to DJ. You have to like, like first prove and, you know, show some, some love before like you can take, take that so know? basically it goes back to providing value in some way it's it's give and take yeah so I've, I've heard like a lot of people who are saying like say you're coming up on youtube or you want to do something like with video editing or mm-hmm. like uh with camera work photography mm-hmm. you'd either like you'd show them that you have something to offer like you're like hey like i i can do this and then you base you both work together and like okay like, this person is like someone mm-hmm. i want to help grow right because they're already like they're not selfish, basically. Like, I'm right. going to help them out, but they're going to help me out. Mm-hmm. And so, like you said, it's a give and take. Right, right. I mean, if you're spreading positive vibes and you're you're bringing good energy and you're, you know, you're bringing people to, then somebody's going to take notice of that eventually. Mm-hmm. And uh, someone's going to give you a shot. Now, what I would highly recommend is that you practice a, a lot before you get that <laughs> shot, you know? Like, a lot, some, a lot of it is luck, uh, you know, believe it or not. But once you get that shot, uh, the way I've always treated every every gig is it's an audition for the next. Mm. And so, you know, you do well, you, you know, obviously don't train wreck uh, and you bring people out and then hopefully that gets you a, a spot for the next gig or someone else sees you and they say, oh, you'd be perfect over here. Uh, and so you make those connections, you, you know, grow those seeds and then eventually you uh create you know like your own network of of of, uh people that'll bring you on to to play gotcha yeah that makes sense and so what do you love about the scene you know i love the diversity of it i think that there's a lot uh to be proud of for you know how inclusive it can be you know any walk of life can can come in and enjoy the music at least you know for the the music that like i want to play you know everyone's welcome everyone you know should be you know everyone can have a good time um and i don't see a lot of that with other genres uh or i would say like i don't know if it's that that's the right term to use the genres but like um with other spaces like i i think electronic music has a lot to offer for for inclusivity yeah I've definitely seen, for the most part, it's been pretty consistent that it's it's that way. I noticed as people talk about it, like talk about it a lot. As it's gotten popular, you notice like a uh, depending on like the DJ set, depending on like the bar club you go to or the venue, you'll notice that like the vibes can be slightly like corrupted because like there's more people coming in who either. They've heard like a few songs mm-hmm. and they don't really care. They're just like, I'm I'm here to to get lit. Right. Like, right. Like, some people are here for both. Mm-hmm. So that's that's different between, you know, yeah. Just coming here to do whatever and not really caring about the people around you. Right. And I mean you you'll get that anywhere too. Oh yeah, There's, for sure. In in every corner of uh, of life or, or of, of the clubs yeah. here. Like, you know, there's always people that like want to get lit. And then there's also other people that you know, are just in it for the music too. So, uh, but I guess the difference is, like you said before, it it was, and it still is, more inclusive. So I've noticed that. Uh, yeah, I guess it's more noticeable. Yeah, if that makes sense. Like if you're, uh, <laughs> it's basically if you have like a white painting, and then someone adds like one like splotch of black, you're like oh, because mm-hmm. it's. Uh, I guess you're almost high, holding it to a higher standard. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like, oh, it, it stands out more. Right. Right. Exactly. This one's a little wordy. <laughs> it, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier with mm-hmm. you with the turntables, like uh, and that difference. It's mm-hmm. like, uh, what is your opinion regarding the difference between like old school DJing, where everything was restricted to vinyl, <laughs> and modern DJing, where most tracks are never put on any physical medium before or after release? Yeah. What was the second part of that question? Uh, 
where everything was restricted to vinyl and modern DJing, where most tracks are never put on any physical medium before or after release. So, like, no CDs, no, usually, at least at this mm -hmm. point. It's mainly, like, streaming, things like that. Right. So, funny enough, so when I did vinyl, it was through Serato. Uh, so, I never actually experienced and got to experience that uh, DJ era of being able to bring crates, being yeah. able to do that. You know, like, we, I kind of just had to, like, you know, look back on on videos of people doing that stuff because mm, uh, that, that wasn't in the yeah. scene at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't really speak to it uh, with experience. Like I'm sure there's plenty of others that 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 can that can walk through it. My observation is that you know that must have been um, where the DJ was very valued at bringing the music, like like club music, yeah, uh, and being the source of that. Mm -hmm. Because how else were you going to back then? like look at or, or hear that type of music you'd have to go to like a record shop you'd have to like listen through all those tracks whereas the dj would do all that stuff for you and they would be the source of of that uh of, of finding out what's the hottest new track uh yeah because they didn't there's no you know spotify back then mm -hmm. there was no uh apple music or or anything there was just the dj showing you like what track is hot right now and if it got people moving then i'm sure there were like, people who wanted to know what that song was and they'd probably ask the yeah it, was, it. it feels like now it's more of a it's just one of the different pieces of the puzzle of like discovering music mm -hmm. so it's like you have your friends you have streaming you have what you already know like the style you like so you're already mm -hmm. like in tune with those genres when new things come then also like for me it's the certain genres of DJs I'm listening to when they're throwing in new songs, like I knew they had great music taste. Mm -hmm. And like, I'll look every single song up from that track that I hadn't heard before. Mm -hmm. So, but do you think like the change now with how things have gone, that it affects like exclusivity? Yeah. I think, I think over time it's made DJing easier to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not a bad thing. And so there's different opinions out there. People will say, you know, the old heads will say, oh, you know, uh, this is not what DJing is about. DJing was all about records, you know, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but, you know, there's there's good things that come out of this, too, which is you get people that might not have ever been able to DJ who now have an easier path to get into it. And what happens is you get uh, maybe more uh variety of music that yeah, or definitely more opportunity for mm -hmm. you know these beautiful tracks to be created which would have been too intimidating for a person back you know in the day now they're they're able to get into it they're able to uh dj and then eventually grow into production or whatever path they take right i think there's more opportunities that are happening now uh because it's gotten easier and that's not a bad thing oh definitely not but do you think that makes it uh, harder to find like your own sound um, or your own style? Yeah, I mean, it just depends. It I mean, depends. everyone, mm -hmm. your your style just depends on what you listen to. Like for me, you know, I've I would love to do a set where it was you know like rock and hip hop, like a DJ AM set. Like mm. I, to do that. Again, oh, that'd be sick. To do that again, like yeah, I've done yeah. it before, but I would love to like you know redo that but it just depends on kind of like how you're brought up like uh what music that you like what music you don't like and then how far you want to push the envelope in terms of mixing those two genres i mean there's one there's one guy right now i think his name is uh uh ray burger uh, yo, yo ray burger and he's pushing uh latin uh into like edm too like along with mm. like de oro and stuff yeah, right yeah. like mm -hmm. like you know i think Dior was like really, really helped out there. Uh, but like, he's he, like, uh, Ray Burger's like pushing some like classics. And I mean, or not classics and some, and some new, uh, like Norteños music, you know, like, so like, like the, with the accordion and stuff and stuff like you would never think, like, oh, like, you know, that with like techno, like, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that to me is, is wild. But it's also cool to see, you know, how far you're willing to push the, the envelope, uh, going somewhere that, people might be nervous about like i i would have been nervous about that too like but not but it's a hit now mm -hmm. um so uh yeah 
how do you have the, I guess, the courage to experiment like that? Because I know there's, like you said before, like that's something that make me nervous too. There's certain things I love, but even sometimes, like, it's not the same thing, but like, say you're like on a road trip with your friends, you're trying to actually enjoy the road trip. So there's some weird stuff that I like. Like, I probably wouldn't be blasting new disco Mm -hmm. on like a five hour car ride, right? Even though I love it. Like, I know it's going to make me excited. But how do you have the courage, like, as a DJ to experiment, but it, show your style or show like they'll probably like this song mm-hmm. or like this this is something that i know i love mm-hmm. and pick the genre or pick the top ones from that genre that you don't think most people would like it takes a I, i'm gonna start us by saying this it takes a, a dj it takes a thick skin to be to be a dj because you get mm-hmm. a lot of hey like this sucks mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> over time over time yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh maybe, maybe it was just me <laughs> i'm just kidding but like um yeah, like you get a lot of criticism, I think, as a DJ, because you open yourself up to literally everybody uh, in the room, right? You're the one that's being judged uh, accordingly. And, you know, rightfully so, you're the one like, providing the music. So uh, I think uh, the DJs that flourish are the ones that are able to take that, uh, to have that ability to take in that criticism and make it like productive like whether it's a you suck or it or whether it's a you know hey like you know can you play a little bit more of this those little types of feedback help grow you uh or the environment that you're in in order to be more successful do you hear that <laughs> okay it's my it's my headphones and i was like what uh for you What's like a memorable moment or a moment you really appreciate from your career so far? You know, I think one of my favorite things was DJing at a after hours. It was called Jack's house. And I think that was probably one of my favorite moments to give you context. It was this after hours was uh, somewhere around here in South Dallas. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was started at two in the morning, goes till eight am and oh, wow nice uh it was cool because i started i started at 3 three forty five a.m yeah, so that was late <laughs> it was late late but everyone it was like a it was it was a house event so everyone was there for house music and on top of that it was like you know this main stream tech house that was like playing and you know at that time you know i was like really into it and so i was like all right like let me like throw down some of these like bangers Mm. uh and the crowd was just going in like really like insane honestly yeah. <laughs> like it felt like everyone was vibing everyone like loved like the mashups and the the remixes that i was playing uh maybe they had heard it before maybe they didn't uh and for me it was exciting to see that type of energy this that late at night or early in the morning uh and people dancing their asses off and i think that's when i that was one of my favorite moments was being able to, to, to live in it. Mm, um, yeah. And I remember, you know, every, every second of it, it, it was, um, it was, it's definitely unfor- unforgettable for me. I had one like that. Where was, uh, I got pulled aside. I don't know. Maybe it was, where's Jack's house at? I can't remember. I can't was remember. it by it'll do? Uh, it used to be, I know that there's been some phases of where okay. it's been located. So no, I, it gave me the mental image of this place that I went to. I remember I was at it'll do one night and, uh, we were, my friends and I are about to walk home to my place. And, uh, some dude pulls like, Hey, like we're having like an after party like here, blah, blah, blah. And it was like right around the corner from it'll do, or like right down the street. And we mm-hmm. go in there and it was just like immaculate mm-hmm. energy. Everyone was vibing. And it was like a, a mix of like house, like some like R and B, some other like classic stuff. Mm-hmm. And everyone was just enjoying themselves, dancing for three or four hours, like three right. o'clock. Like, oh wow! Like yeah. those are the places I probably enjoy going to the most. It's just like everyone's on the same page. Like we're here to have fun. We're just like here to enjoy the night. Like it's just, right, yeah. Just enjoy the music. Like we all know what we like. Like mm-hmm. we like this type of shit. Let's let's, yeah. ro- let's vibe out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and. I guess craziest and like one that was bad. <laughs> craziest, um, you know, I I think of a crazy time. There's two, and there's crazy good and 
crazy. I wouldn't say bad. I wouldn't say it was crazy bad, but it, I thought it was fun, hilarious. <laughs> um, at the time, it's mm-hmm. not, it's not, it wasn't hilarious to do now. But okay, so let me go with the first one. So, craziest. Um, I think it was crazy emotional. Uh, for me, I was DJing at Top Golf, uh, and this old couple came up to me and they asked for a track. Uh, I can't remember what it was to save my life, but it was uh something um some kind of like low key dancing kind of vibe and i remember playing that track and then they were really like uh emotional after that they're like hey like we've been going through a hard time we've been uh because it's kind of like an older couple right yeah. um mm-hmm. and they you know really it made their night and it made it very beautiful and i remember it because you know they said you know thank you so much like you know we we really appreciate it and you know we or like it was kind of like seeing them these like two this older couple like falling in love again you know oh, that's and, amazing yeah and and to me i was just like wow like this is actually like why i do this like this mm-hmm. is like the fruits of the labor right here is this uh so that was like crazy emotional now the fun transitioning to the the other crazy one i remember there was a fight going on at um at a at a hookah lounge and i remember uh in, in I, I wouldn't say i was instigating it by any means uh but like it was just happening right by the the decks and i was just trying to say like oh you know like what's what's going on guys and uh i was trying to be a little cheeky mm-hmm. and i started playing knuck if you bug <laughs> and i i think <laughs> oh, and, and i think i made it worse <laughs> oh, no I, uh, I thought it was hilarious at the oh, time and i yeah. think they got mad at me for that but i mean <laughs> Like it, it, it does definitely make for a good story. I mean, they oh, eventually yes. kicked that person out, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, started the fight. But yeah, I mean, not a lot of people can say they, you know, there was a fight going on right next to them, <laughs> and then they just started playing Nuck if you fuck and just made it worse. Yeah, of all the ways this year, that's <laughs> I think that's hilarious too. But I can see how, like, in the moment, like, why, <laughs> why yeah. would you do this? Yeah, what's going on? If the staff are looking at me like, dude, like, stop, please. <laughs> uh. Let's take you away from the from the DJ DJ booth. Uh, for you, just like any festival or shows that like had meaning to you, like you're like, okay, wow, this like had an emotional weight. Yeah, so I think one of the best. So okay, so a show that I went to recently mm-hmm. that I think everyone needs to experience is Zoo. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you if you've been yet, but I that, haven't. No. Uh, Zoo just came by, I think it was like last week, actually. Uh, and it was one of the best performances I've ever seen from an artist. Uh, and I think my bar would probably be like Disclosure and Rufus du Soul, Like those, oh, those, yeah. those types of live performances like really have like a soft spot in my heart. Because I had a great time at Disclosure and Rufus du Soul is like top of the like I need to go see them. Yeah, <laughs> because they they... For me, like, you know, I, I love a DJ set, like, you know, but when they when they do a live set, I think it just adds that much more emotion, that much more technique to it. Because they're just, I don't, for me, like, they're like real instruments that I'm like, yeah, like, that's that's kind of how I started, too. So, like, I, I find a lot of similarities there. And so it, it means more to me, I guess. Mm. Uh, that not everyone's like that, obviously, yeah, yeah. but like, <laughs> for me, like, that's, that's why it mattered a little bit, or that's why it meant a lot more to me. But yeah, Zoo is really, really good. Uh, his uh, the production that they do for that show is is pretty insane. And even the person that opened up for them, Noise Zoo, uh, was was incredible. Uh, so yeah, um, if you missed it, then you know FOMO, you missed out. Uh, <laughs> but but I would highly recommend like going to going to Zoo. As far as the festival, um, man, I haven't been to a festival since I want to say it was uh, Friendship. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you're looking for a festival to go to that's on a cruise ship, that's a nonstop party for four or five days, uh, go to that. Uh, mm. And I think, you know, I've done EDC Vegas, I've done Ultra Miami. Those those are all really great festivals, uh, and you should definitely take the time to go to those if you're like new to the scene or if you've never been. But I think when the cruise ship ones is just a next level higher than that. Mm. This is- is it the freedom and the consistency of it, or is like DJs playing throughout? You know, I think it's the the environment. I think is really great because you are in a boat 
with all of these artists and they're all playing throughout the night. And if you ever want to, if it ever gets overwhelming for you, you can always go back to your room mm, and you can always like take a nap, down. wind down, and then get back out there uh, as soon as you're ready to go. Uh, I can't tell you how many. And I think one of the things that should be mentioned is that it's a marathon, not a sprint. And that's you, something I definitely need to be reminded of. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really you you get really excited the first time you go on there, and it's very easy to just pun intended go overboard. <laughs> oh yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, like you know, just make sure that you pace yourself when you're when you're going on those cruise ships stuff on the cruise ships like those. They're they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. I think. For me, it would be, there was one, it, it, it shut down a couple of years ago. It was not t- Tomorrow World, but Tomorrow Land, the one that was in Georgia. Uh, I think that one was Tomorrow World, and Tomorrow okay, Land is the one Tomorrow in Tomorrow Land is the one that's in Boom, Belgium. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, the opposite. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but yeah, I went to that one. It was the last year, because they didn't have their shit together. Mm-hmm. But uh, it just went wrong in every way. But we had like the most fun we ever had because everyone like agreed like this is shit. Let's make it fun, right? Because what I, I remember we drove there from Dallas and it stormed the night, and so we couldn't find the parking lot, right? And we were camping, mm-hmm. and so we didn't get there till like four or five a.m. in the morning, and we had to wait to the till the camp actually opened again because mm-hmm. we couldn't find the entrance, right? Get in there, all our friends are there. We carry our stuff through the mud, yeah, and then everyone's just like. This is, this is horrible, mm-hmm. but let's have fun, right? And so, just everyone having a great time, making the most of, the most out of a horrible situation, just having a blast, dancing their hearts out, right? Just vibing together, where it's like kind of like one of those things where it's like when there's a tragedy, and people just come together, right? This horrible event, everyone's like, let's let's have fun, let's have each other's back, exactly. make sure everyone's okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I I think that's one of the things to love about the dance scene too is mm-hmm. the energy that everyone brings. Uh, can make those situations better. Yeah, for sure. And I think I'm going to end with these two. Sure. For for you, what song you're you're really happy that like it got popular? Like you're excited that like this song was brought up or this genre was brought up. Mm-hmm. <sighs> what song was really popular? Can I just go with like a favorite song? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I think even when I was rolling into it uh, mm-hmm. into here when listening to it, but it's uh, "Angel on My Shoulder" uh, by Cascade. But it's the EDX remix. Mm, okay. The EDX remix is a little more vibey. Uh, it's it was a beautiful day out, and uh, I think it hit on all levels. Like when I was coming in here, I'm really glad that that uh, song was dropped. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's. I think for me. Uh... That whole, that whole Ocean Lab album. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I'm yeah. just really happy I discovered that at that time in my life because it's like it started me on this journey of this all these genres where it's like I don't think I would have dabbled in any of this stuff, mm-hmm. most likely, or maybe I would have got in like late, way later. Right. But I think I discovered at a younger age because of things like that. Where it's like, oh, like, this is just beautiful. Right. <laughs> and so. Like, gave me that appreciation what in like middle school or it's like, oh mm-hmm. yeah no i mean that and that's not a that's not a bad answer either i, I love ocean lab too so and then for you like a song okay the settle down and like just i <sighs> wish i had discovered this or a genre really what's your answer to this i'm curious because uh, i <laughs> for me i think it's uh it's all of the weird like R and B where it's uh I'm like proud to be a fuckboy. Mm-hmm. Where it's uh I think I liked I liked R and B more when it was like about like uh it's still there. There's a lot of R and B I found recently where it's still got that soul and like that heart to it. Mm-hmm. But a lot of this stuff, it's like uh the R and B artists that have gotten popular recently. I noticed that they have this vibe where they're like I want to be like the rappers. Right. So it's like they want the money, but they also want the like I'm hard too. I'm hard. And so yeah. they're like singing beautifully, but they're like like uh, this 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 and this and this chick and this chick. I'm saying okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It seems like it's uh, I wouldn't say like hypocritical or anything, but they just don't mesh. Yeah, they don't match. Yeah, 
like it still sounds good, but uh, it doesn't give me the the same feeling mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as yeah. <sighs> That's a hard one mm-hmm. uh, because I think all music is 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 beautiful, but man, if there's if there's one track that I think was probably overplayed, I think it's probably Fisher losing it. Uh, I, I could have done without it, but <laughs> like, every, every, everyone liked it, and yeah. it was just like, okay, this is annoying. Um, you know, I I played it before. I'll admit that. I was about to ask. I, that, I, I played you? it before, <laughs> yeah. And then it, it got old really quick, and then I was like, okay, let's play some remixes of this. And then those remixes got played, and I was like, okay, I'm done with this track. Like, probably, <laughs> I, I'm finally free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably within the span of like two weeks is the how, like how fast that went. Oh wow, uh, yeah. And and then I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm done with this. And last one uh, for you. What's like a subgenre that you want to get more of, where you want to get more appreciation or blow up more? That's a good question. Uh, something that I've been listening to that one of my friends put me on was Minimal Techno, uh, and I think that's uh, if you haven't listened to it, I like, haven't. Yeah, what? yeah. Go, yeah. Go ahead and listen to it. I think the if it put in more technical terms, I mean, it's, it's techno, but slowed down, maybe. Okay. Well, we'll just look up minimal techno. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. A, little, a little bit more slowed down. Uh, and uh, I think there it's less about, if I were to summarize it, and I'm probably going to butcher it, but uh, if I were to summarize it, I, I think there's less emphasis on big, giant drops and more emphasis on uh, swell and building connection. Mm, that's okay. and, yeah. And, that sounds peaceful and beautiful. Yeah, it's it's I I, I think peaceful is, is is a good way to to put it. I think there's it's meditating as well. Um, it's one that I want to explore more in the future. Uh, and eventually, if I went if and when I have time. So. Okay. Yeah. Well. Hmm. Can I think of one? Uh, I'm just gonna go with new disco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just actually. I want more of a like a, a bringing it back to like trance, trance. Yeah, 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 yeah. So more of that, uh, that or like sun lounge or something like that, like that tropical vibe. Mm-hmm. Final answer: sun loungers. Like anything like that. I just I want that to be more sun lounge, like tropical house. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like that Kygo kind of yeah. sound. Yeah. That's but good. I feel like Kygo is a little bit more poppy than I want, so like a little, uh, add a little bit more tropical to it, and then that's where I want like somewhere in the middle ground because Kygo's still good. Like, yeah, I still enjoy them, but mm-hmm. a little bit more of that tropical. Yeah, definitely. All right, uh, we'll end with that. Just shout out your socials and cool. I'll yeah. tag them below. Yeah, if you want to follow me on Twitch, uh, it's uh, Gil underscore T, and then Instagram is uh, I think it's guilty pleasure but i think it's uh guilty underscore pleasure uh so follow me on my socials um i'm always trying to post uh when i have my streams up so you know you can always listen from the comfort of your couch uh and then i'll also uh tag whenever i'm playing in dallas so yeah that's about it appreciate you having me on here and of course uh, it was a great time yeah talking about uh music and with that take care cool